I drove for GoPuff for one month, and I'm gonna go over exactly how much I made, what the job is like, and if you should try it out for yourself. What's going on everyone, it's Yami, and today we are talking once again about GoPuff. I'm about to share some insider information, so please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, so if I get sued, I know it was worth it. It takes two seconds of your time, helps the YouTube algorithm, helps me out, and most importantly, it's free. All right, let's get into it. I think it's best to start with a company overview. GoPuff is a thriving young company that is taking the delivery sector by storm. Honestly, looking towards the future, I have no doubt in my mind that GoPuff's gonna dominate the space that they're in. This is because they're sidestepping the competition like DoorDash and Grubhub by offering something completely different. They only have convenient items, as in things you can buy at a convenience store, all stored in a singular space. This makes orders get to the customer a lot quicker than restaurant food, and it's not close. I delivered an order the other day, and when I got to the door, they said they hit the purchase button, and I was there in nine minutes. Can you imagine having the munchies searching on GoPo for exactly what you want, hitting purchase, and then it coming to your door in nine minutes? I mean, that's probably quicker than you going to the convenience store yourself and getting it. There's no other delivery service out there that offers that speed at such a low cost. GoPuff has a current valuation of $15 billion and can get money from investors with a snap. I can imagine within the next five years or so that GoPuff will be a public company, be available everywhere in America, maybe even have a global presence and five times their valuation today. So in short, objectively speaking, GoPuff is an absolute beast of an organization. However, it's interesting. If you look up news for GoPuff, you're gonna see a ton of articles on how they're growing their business and doing all these innovations in the delivery space. But you're not gonna see much at all about the friction within the company. And there absolutely is some issues. I talked about this in a previous video, so if you wanna see a certain level of corruption in the company, hit this video right here and you can hear all about it. But basically, GoPuff's not treating their drivers with a ton of respect. There's been a cut in the number of hours offered by GoPuff, sudden terminations, insulting pay raises, and no real protection being a driver. Again, if you want to get into detail about all of this, click my other video. There is a palpable lack of trust between drivers and GoPuff. I think it's going to be a while until we feel that respect come back. I know all that sounds really bad, because it is, but there are definitely some positives for the company too. Overall, they're providing a lucrative, on-your-own-time, simple way to make money as a driver. The job will be one of the easiest things you will ever do in comparison to the money that you're going to make. All you have to do is wait for an order at the warehouse where they store all the products they offer, retrieve a bag that you don't have to pack, go to an address on your phone, drop it off, take a picture of it, and then go back to the warehouse to do it all again. The only time you even have to contact the customer is if it's an alcohol order. And even then, all you have to do is scan an ID and then the rest of the process is the exact same. That's the entire job in a nutshell. There's actually no more to it than that. Sounds easy enough, but let's get into the financials of the job. Just how lucrative is it after one month? If you don't know how GoPuff pays their drivers, let me quickly explain. For every order that you deliver, you get a flat fee depending on your market. So for mine, I get $3.50 per order. On top of that, you get to keep the full tip. You also get weekly rewards for completing a certain amount of deliveries per week. You also get a weekly subsidy. Also depending on your local market, mine, I make $12.15 an hour. What that subsidy is, is if I don't make at least $12.15 in delivery fees per hour, GoPuff will supplement the remainder. For instance, if I only have two deliveries in an hour, I only made $7 in delivery fee. So what that means is GoPuff will supplement me an extra $5.15 to bring me to that $12.15 minimum per hour. Okay, I hope that makes sense, but it's completely understandable if you're a little confused. I overheard some drivers the other night that's been there for months, and they still didn't know exactly how the pay structure works. Anyway, here's the breakdown of the money I made. So in those four weeks, I worked a total of 76 and a half hours. I totaled $2,016.38 from tips, commission, and that weekly subsidy that I was talking about. This means I made an average of $26.36 an hour, which sounds pretty great on its own, but I also had to pay for a ton of gas. I filled up five times in the last four weeks. Each time was around $32 to fill up. So in total, I spent around $160 in gas. With that included, the total adjusted hourly rate averages down to $23.75 per hour. Still pretty fantastic for such a simplistic side hustle if you ask me. It should also be said that I did pay for an oil change in the last four weeks, and I know I would have done that anyway, but due to this job, you're going to be driving a lot, so you're going to have more frequent oil changes, so be sure to factor that into your calculation. But you can all but guarantee that you'll be making at least $20 an hour if your market is nice and developed. 
developed. And that is a big if, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. The money speaks for itself, but I do want to say that I live very frugal. I don't spend a lot of money on food, entertainment, products I don't need, nothing like that. So this kind of money for me is more than enough to live off of, and I work less than half of the amount of hours as a full-time job. I'm going to let that sink in and we're going to move on to my final thoughts and if I think this is the right side hustle for you. I cannot overstate the simplicity of this job. I rarely, if ever, feel stressed, anxious, or negative about the job at all while I'm doing it. I mean, sometimes it's frustrating when you get into an apartment complex and the layout of the buildings makes no sense, but usually they have a map at the front entrance so you can just refer to that. And if that's my biggest complaint, I think that speaks volume to the overall process. 99% of the time I'm listening to my podcast, audiobooks, music, or whatever, and just enjoying the nice weather. It's a very zen experience every time I work. It's pretty nice. And with this relaxation, I'm getting paid more than I was in any of my past jobs. But that's not even the kicker. The greatest thing about this job to me is that I make my own schedule. How it works is they drop all the shifts of that week at the same time every week, and you just grab the shifts that work for you. But you do have to be quick on the draw. The shifts are set times as in like 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. and you are expected to work that entire shift, but you choose the shift that works best for you. I don't want to work mornings, so I simply don't. And that's amazing to me. No one tells me when I have to work at all. If I want to take a week off to go on a trip, I don't have to ask anyone. And I know I just said that you're expected to work the entire shift, but there's been shifts where it's been not so busy at the end of it, so I just asked to go home because I don't want to do it anymore, and they let me, no questions asked. It's the most lax management I've ever seen, and it works beautifully. Quick aside, I honestly don't like when workplaces are trying too hard to be a family. The last two jobs I had were very young companies and tried so many initiatives to get everyone closer together, but of course they didn't work. It really has to be more organic to be a real relationship. This isn't Dom Toretto and the crew. We don't have to love each other to work together, but that's just my hot take of the day. At GoPuff, nothing like that. No one is forcing you to talk to anyone and everyone's just doing their job. However, most people that do work there are very close. We joke around all day when we do see each other and all the warehouse workers usually carpool together. And it's because these relationships are formed naturally. They have no forced icebreakers that you have to do and there's no mandatory fun meetings outside of work. It's a very real workplace that just does a genuinely good job and that's very important to me. But switching gears to something just a little bit more negative. I have been hearing by other drivers that sometimes GoPuff will mess up their paychecks. As in they don't pay out the correct amount sometimes and it's very difficult to get a hold of someone that can help resolve that issue. One person told me that they've been waiting three weeks for a correct paycheck and they still have yet to receive it. Not only that, but most GoPuff warehouses have cut down the amount of hours given to drivers, so that decreases your likelihood of getting the shift that you desire. To both of these points, I say, it strongly depends on your local market. Personally, I've yet to see any paycheck errors on my end and in my market, I've only seen one person ever have that kind of error. But if your market is oversaturated with drivers, you can bet that this is pretty crippling when it comes to securing those shifts that you want. So again, please check with your local market and see what the drivers are saying, but take everything with a grain of salt. Tons of drivers are complaining about things that I personally just don't feel at all. For instance, people are complaining about sudden terminations, but usually the story goes that they didn't show up for the shift and they didn't communicate what was happening. That's equivalent to a no-call no-show, and in the service industry, that is rarely acceptable. It's a job. And no, you're not that important to them as a driver, truth be told. Call it what it is and just enjoy the easy money coming to your bank account. Now, do I think this is the best job for you? Look, everyone's situation is very different. I was just looking for quick money, I signed up and was able to drive within an hour. So if that's what you're trying to do, it's definitely something you can try. This job works great for a lot of people, but the best person for the job in my mind is someone who, one, does not mind the delivery gig. Two, does not want a normal nine to five job. Three, has a fuel efficient vehicle. I'm talking to you, Prius owners. Four, is somewhat tech savvy. This is to quickly use the app, navigation, and communicate with managers. Five, wants to use this job to just pay the bills and not try to make it a living. Why I say that last part is because this job has a point of diminishing returns. As in, it's great money if you work 20 hours a week, but if you work 40 hours a week, you're gonna see that average hourly rate decrease pretty substantially. Now it's still obviously more money than working 20 hours a week, but I don't know if you'd feel the best about it because then it'd be like working a barely above minimum wage job. Again though, do what's best for you, I'm just giving my perspective. Overall, it's a wonderfully simplistic and lucrative company to 
work for. I will always remain skeptical of GoPuff, but for now, I honestly think it's the best side hustle you could ever ask for, given how easy the sign up and the job is. But if I didn't cover something, please let me know in the comments below. Also, subscribe because I'll keep you up to date on any news that comes out about GoPuff. Once you start making that money, click this video right here to see how to optimize your income and expenses. Lastly, I hope I earned your like. And always remember, stay frugal.